Well, good morning. It's about 6.30 in the morning. I've been up for the last hour just enjoying the loon calls and hearing the fish jumping in the lake. Wind died down last night. It was a lovely night. Ooh, the fish are jumping. Uh, really, really quiet out. Um, just loons, tree frogs. Just some little birds starting right now. So peaceful night, no bears, no, uh, no wolves or anything like that. So this is a great spot. Got this cute little fishing kit here from Princess Auto. Uh, if you open it up, it's got a couple uh, little kits in here. So these little kind of plastic tackle boxes. Um, they even had a couple of fishing lures there too. I picked up one of them, just a little spinner right here. Let's take a look. Just this little guy right here. It's kind of cute, give that a whirl. And uh, I also grabbed a couple more of these little clamps, always useful when you're fishing. Still is glass out here this morning. Beautiful. It's supposed to be another hot one today. 31 degrees. I already see it, it's hazy. Ooh, got a nibble. I'm just tasting it. bass that's ridiculous <laughs> I'll put him back he's still growing <laughs> figured it was little the way it was behaving <laughs> that's too funny bass you want to cast right onto the shore I'm using a spinner Meps number two Loon over there. Do you see that jump behind me? They're jumping, they're feeding. There we go. <laughs> Another little guy. Jeez, the same one probably. <laughs> oh, marginally bigger. This much bigger. That's a different one. You have hit on the nursery. I don't think I'll get trout in here. I'll have to go up in that little lake maybe later today and see if we can get anything. Not really sure. Never fished in here before, so I don't have any clue where anything is. <laughs> Man, these are really small. Check out that sunrise behind me. Sunrise. <laughs> it's gonna be the best part of the day to be out in the water, honestly. It'll be way too hot later. why people love coming to the park. So gorgeous here. Well, back on shore, that was lots of fun. Uh, just so peaceful, you know. Now you can start to see everybody waking up and you can hear more boats and the power boats coming in from the boat launch. So uh, 
yeah, that golden hour, you know, five, six thirty, you know, ish that time when the fish are jumping, it's just you and nature. It's the best. So I'm just gonna make some breakfast now. I've got that scrambled eggs there from Mountain House with the bacon in it. We'll give it a try and we'll see how good it is. Supervisor just making sure everybody's safe. Apparently on the shore he was just watching me like a hawk. Just treating some water here. We pump some water from our little uh, Caden hiker water purification system. But it's got a bit of a leak now, so I don't know. I'm a little sketched out. So um, I do have another one. Um, that one's about 15 years old. So we're gonna just retire it after this trip. I think I do have aqua tabs right here just as a backup. Um, just don't trust that filter right now. So um, yeah. I mean, it should be okay, but you know, you wanna get Giardia or something like that out here. And because this lake, you know, there are a few people out here, you really don't want to end up getting a bacterial infection or something like that. So best to do the tablets just to be safe. A couple liters of water in here, so I'm just gonna put a couple of tablets in. All right, so there are the two tablets. Um, you mix it up for about 10 minutes and let it sit for 30 before drinking it. Just having some coffee and reheating my eggs and bacon and I'm gonna have some honey with peanut butter and a wrap. All right there's my scrambled eggs a little watery but uh, whatever we'll make it work. What I always find about backpacking meals if you don't make them yourself you don't know how much water to add and stuff. I mean they say a certain amount but really never works out that way I find. Um, so let's give it a try. Not bad. That's actually pretty good. Piece of bacon in there and the eggs. So, nah, whatever. We'll strain out the water. <laughs> just had a morning walk here and we can find some beautiful mushrooms. Take a look at that. It's just beautiful purple color there. Early this morning I also found a reishi mushroom, so hopefully I can find it again. I found it in the dark, actually. <laughs> just up on this trail here. There it is. There's our reishi friend. It's a medicinal. Ganoderma suge. So it is, uh, it's an older one. Looks like it's right near the opening of a chipmunk hole. How cool is that? So this is also called the hemlock varnish shelf. So this is an old hemlock. There's lots of hemlock in here. And you can see a young little hemlock coming out of the old. Isn't that neat? Now look at this. Here's somebody who's not really smart. Just a little hiking trail behind the um, campsite here. And someone, this is why you never put fire over organic material. You see what it's done here? It sort of burnt out this whole area. So you always want to put above like on sand or, um, you know, like stones and stuff like that. Like if you put a fire on top of organic material, like this could spread underground and kind of go all throughout in here. So please don't do that. Got some old chanterelles right here. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. Ah, week too late. But there you go. You see those little false gills that's what we're looking for it's gonna be a great fall for mushroom foraging i'm really looking forward to it just need a little bit more rain for another flush so this is really this is really cool right here you think these are like little moss covered rocks it's actually all moss so you see i didn't i did this is like this already but look at that this is all moss it looks like rocks so soft oh it's wonderful oh, a little mushroom growing out of it <laughs> This is all along here, so beautiful. This is a really nice area. The campsites are pretty spread apart, so even though we're on an island, um, it's quite a walk actually to get to the next site. Here's a nice little lookout. This is just where I was fishing, like straight out in here and all along through here. So, wind's coming up again. It'll be a little bit windy day, but that's okay. I'll take the wind when it's hot out. Keeps the bugs away too. Look at this. It's a cantharella species, I'm pretty sure of it. Look at that. Not black trumpets, but we'll look that one up when we get back. This is a new one for me. Gorgeous looking mushroom. Look at that. Definitely has those false gills, so I think it's cantharellus. We'll find out. I'll let you guys know. So 
They're growing in these clusters here on the ground. Fairly fresh too. I don't have my ID book here with me, so I'm not gonna pick these to eat them or anything, but. That tube in there. And the cluster, let's see what other trees were around us. So basically lots of hemlock and pine. in here, so we'll look that up. I love mushroom foraging. It is the best activity. It just really engages you. Uh, and sometimes you find something really cool. Like I found that mushroom, I've never seen it before in my life. And I, but I generally know kind of what it is, so uh, just gotta look it up, but it's so much fun. Uh, I hope you guys get into this hobby, even if it's just taking pictures, looking at them, not asking to eat them or anything like that. But um, yeah, this is really neat. I mean, I'm a little bit too late for some of the edible ones around here. It's just a little bit dry, but uh, I don't know, maybe we'll find something else today. We'll see. Uh, there's an old amanita. So this one is toxic. This is fly agaric. You can see the little vulva or the cup there. Really dried out and a little speckly top. Not toxic to touch, but definitely you don't want to eat it. Big old bowl eat right here. Ooh. Oh, yuck. That's old. Maybe I'll find a sep or something like that in here. Beautiful coral fungus right there. Love the diversity in fungi. It's great. One of the deadliest mushrooms in Ontario. It's called the death cat mushroom. This is a brand new one. Look at that. I just want to show you. This is super dangerous. It will kill you if you don't get treatment immediately. If you eat it. Ghostly white against the forest. Big cup there. White top gills. Stay away. You mean you can touch it, but you cannot ingest it. Finish up our walk, I found my favorite edible mushroom, a hedgehog. Look at that, very, very good condition. Delicious. All right, time to head out now uh, before it gets way too hot. Uh, got the alpaca raft in the backpack, a few things. I'm gonna head out now to a um, little inland lake called Andy's Lake. So that's, I mean, kind of where we wanted to camp near there last night, but there's no availability. So we're gonna just paddle up there before it gets scorching hot. It's around nine o'clock right now. You can already feel the heat beating down on me. So I'm gonna spend the morning kind of exploring, maybe paddling around with the alpaca raft uh, in that little lake and leave the canoe on shore. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll cast a fishing line. We'll see if we catch anything. Got my UV shirt on cause it's blazing. And uh, yeah, we'll have a good time and get back hopefully before it gets too hot and go for a swim. All right, so we're just getting there. Uh, I discovered there's a little tiny creek to get to Andy's Lake, and there's another little lake behind that that we can um, take the uh, alpaca raft to. So we're just gonna head over this way. Hopefully we can get through the creek. It's not too choked up with weeds. All right, so the creek is completely overgrown, so this will be the end of our stop, and we're gonna have to hike in with our gear. While you have the alpaca raft, it's really cool. You can get to places where you normally couldn't get into with a canoe. These mushrooms, very beautiful. Shocking orange. We're just on our way now to try to find Andis Lake. But beautiful nonetheless. We're just gonna kind of follow the creek line. I've got my GPS on too. Mark where the canoe is and stuff. Just had to kind of get off the shoreline and into the woods a little bit to, in order to be able to um, get through this stuff. And take a look at this. We've got moose in the area. Moose on the loose. There's some fungus growing out of there already. It's been there for a while. Now in a little bit of a cedar swamp in here. It's really pretty. See why the moose like it. It's a bit more open. These are really old cedars. Kind of reminds me of the cabin. So lucky to have a cedar swamp with the cabin too. Deciduous in there too, but a bit of a bushwhack, but we're almost there. All right, so we've made it. We are the only people on this lake. It's what I like. I'm gonna try a little bit of fishing in here and just paddling around, exploring. That's what it's all about. There's a big old animal trail along here. It must be where the moose come in. So this is a spot to inflate the uh, boat. Lots of cool mushrooms in here. Witch's hat all through here. Very nice. All right, we are ready to go. 
ready to rumble. See, this is why you bring these cool things. You can go and explore these lakes without having to drag a canoe through thick brush. So let's go see what we can find. All right, we're on the water. It's beautiful in here. These beautiful, deep, cold little inland lakes. I don't know if it's cold enough for trout, but uh, probably some bass and stuff in here. Oh, sun is bright, excuse me. So we're all loaded up in here in the uh, Alpaca Raft Forager edition. So it fits two people and a 90 pound dog very comfortably. I'm sitting on top of a seat right here on top of the raft. Forgot the um, forgot the paddles, basically the um, kayak paddles. So I'm just going to be using a couple of canoe paddles, whatever. Um, it's not very windswept, so you can kind of just poke along in here and float. It's not a big deal. So gorgeous out. Take a look at this beautiful scenery, these beautiful bluffs here. I did have a little fish chasing my line. I don't know what it was. It was long, skinny, or medium sized, I guess. Tapped on the line. Didn't get it though. And if I don't get anything, it's just worth hanging out and look at this beautiful scenery. My goodness. Beautiful day. Well, that was lots of fun. We're on the way back now and here's the little stream that used to be that you could canoe up from Opiongo up into Andy's Lake. And you can't get through there now. <laughs> so uh, almost back at the canoe now. I'm gonna go back and have some lunch and rest. It's too hot out. Here's a treat. There's a broadwing hawk above us hunting. Hawk of the forest. See him there. back to the campsite now. I'm just gonna go over here and see what's up. It looks like a little kayak. There's some people in the water. I'm not really sure if they're okay or not. So I'm just gonna go in and check it out. Maybe just horsing around, but uh, you never know, so we're gonna check it out. All right, determined they were just swimming. It's all good. <laughs> But uh, this is a pretty big lake and if you don't know what you're doing and you flip over and it's cold and deep, you know, you always want to be really careful. So, uh, kind of keep our eyes out for each other out here, but uh, it's all good. So there is the water taxi boat with someone's canoe on it. I just want to show you guys that that is a thing. Um, if you wanted to get to the North Arm or different campsite. Oh, they're coming over to check on them too, see? When you look all weird like you're in the water, the water taxi immediately peeled back to check on them. That's awesome. Yeah, see they think they're capsized so they're just going in to take a look. Determining we're all good and we're back. So, but anyway, I'm glad they turned around to take a look. Uh, yeah, so that's where the uh, canoes go out to the, uh, the north arm of the lake so you can go to your site without paddling all the way. Well, back at the site. That was awesome. Three and a half hours of paddling. Well, could be a half hour hiking in there too. But uh, well, it was awesome. Saw things that a lot of people wouldn't get to see. And I really like having the alpaca raft so you can expand your adventures. So I'll do a review on that. I'm still working on that. But um, I really enjoyed having that on this trip. Never done something like that before. Canoed somewhere, bring in a boat somewhere, go check other things out. It uh, opens up a whole lot of doors, let me tell you, for other adventures. So uh, I'm just going to have a rest now on the shore, have my lunch. Just snacking away on things, pepperettes, cashews, crackers. Need some calories and need to drink something too. I'm getting a little bit dehydrated, so it's windy, hot, I get sweaty and stuff like that. So time to catch up and uh, have a little rest and enjoy the view. Alright, so now that I'm relaxing by shore, I'm just watching other people go by. Look at this guy with all his gear. Like, how long is he out for? Man, it looks like he'd be out for like two weeks straight. Nah, but who am I to judge? I like to bring lots of stuff too, but honestly, for two people and a dog, just a couple of bags and stuff, and like an, an alpaca raft. Anyway, I don't know. Whatever, teach their own. Be comfortable out here, be safe. Here's the campsite wildlife. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't worry about bears, just uh, campsite mice. 
Well, I was gonna go swimming and then it got kind of cold and really cloudy and I thought rain was coming in. So I just went out to get more mushrooms and stuff. Um, down here, I wanna show you a mushroom that I really like. It's Lactarius. Tis the season for these. This is Lactarius thinos, associated with cedar. Very nice perfumey smell and we have that um, orange latex. Mm, smells great. I love these. They're super crunchy when you put them in like a stir fryer cook with them. They're really good. All right, for dinner tonight, we've got pasta. So made at home and rehydrated, the best way to make it. Lake also has cormorants on it. This means there's lots of fish, love it or hate it. Um, a lot of people don't like cormorants because they feel that they decimate the fisheries and stuff like that, but I don't know about that. Um, Anyways, there's a loon and a cormorant literally just off the dock here, the dock, <laughs> off the shore here, fishing together while I was having supper. So it's pretty cool watching them both together within literally five feet of each other. I wonder if they clang heads under the water trying to get the same fish or something. But uh, it's probably a good little, you know, fishery here with like perch and other small things that they can uh, nibble on and whatnot. But uh, yeah, lots of seagulls too, and they're pretty habituated to people. Like. I remember this morning when I was going fishing and I cast my line out, like three seagulls instantly like swirling around, like waiting for me to catch something so the entrails could be theirs or whatnot. It was pretty funny. So we got a bit of excitement here. This boat pulled into our site and asked if uh, someone had called for an ambulance. So we've got a bit of a situation on the lake here. Someone needs help and they're trying to figure out who it is. So uh, we heard a yell actually earlier coming from this island. So I'm wondering if this is what's going on. So there's two guys camping straight ahead on this island here. It seems like the boat may have stopped there. Jeez, that's really bad. So there's like two older guys, they kind of were coming in late looking for a campsite. I'd say about 15 minutes ago, I hear like a bah kind of noise, whatever. You hear people on the lake. You hear a bunch of people playing in their canoes and counting down and ah, yelling and stuff. Been thinking of it. But then this boat comes ripping around and uh, it was like a policeman, like like paramedic stuff like that, saying like, hey, did you guys call the ambulance? You okay? Like, oh my God. So I think it might be those guys on the island. It's only one campsite on that island. I'm hoping he didn't like cut his leg with an ax or something. Um, it was definitely, I heard a yell, but it wasn't like help. It was like one kind of like, ah, kind of like, you know, if you're like really hurt yourself. Jeez, hope they're okay. It's a long weekend. There's always some seriousness that happens on the long weekend when you're out. So remember earlier I told you guys that um, all the sites here are just registered as like 200 South Arm. There's like literally no numbers to any of the campsites. So you can see how this is going to be an issue. Like what if you, you know, you called for help and you're like, I'm at, I don't know, I'm somewhere on the South Arm. I don't know exactly where I'm at. Um, you know, they're going campsite to campsite, figuring out who the heck called. So um, that's an issue. Like, I mean, yeah, they know if you're lost or whatever, they can like say, okay, they're in this kind of like area, but... Like you're kind of wasting time driving around trying to find all the campsites and talk to people and crawl around and see like what if someone's injured back in the bush or something they're not up by the you know not up by the uh, shoreline or something like that so i hope they change that i mean i don't know why it's like that i mean most places i've been at like some of the other backcountry places like there's always a number and you put your little permit out and stuff like that like i thought it was a guy coming to check my permit just to make sure i was supposed to be here and i was like getting ready with all that and then i was like what it was an accident so anyway i hope they change that because that like waste time like looking around trying to find out like who called if you had a number like you knew exactly where you were boom they can get you help right away okay the plot thickens they're still looking for people um they're going around a little island up there um we can hear them over the speaker like on their radio saying Something about people have food, shelter, water. There's been a message from a satellite phone. So they're still looking for someone. I momentarily panicked that I had accidentally set off my ACR rescue link or something like that. I didn't. But, um, oh boy. This is, uh, this is not good. Well, hope that ends up okay. Just decompressing by the fire. Sort of takes me back to when I had my own heart emergency in the bush many years ago resulted in my uh, heart procedure, the ablation. So I'll put a link to the videos of that emergency. I actually filmed the whole thing. Self-rescue from a cardiac issue. Pretty crazy. That's probably the reason I had the, like, the emergency rescue link at that time. I didn't have to use it, but an hour of uh, having a heart rate of 240 beats a minute is a little stressful. 
Anyway, but I uh, hope everybody will be okay tonight. Yeah, boat in the background still those rescue people. Unbelievable. not expecting rain but very light rain right now No fish tonight, but look at this show. It's just beautiful. So walking around, it's getting dark out, and I have this little lantern that I picked up that you guys saw from uh, Bass Pro Shops. This thing's awesome. It looks it's a little collapsible silicone bowl, but uh, it has three different settings, so you can kind of carry it around with you. A lantern. So highly recommend it. It wasn't that expensive, and it uh, has three different settings. And USB chargeable and solar chargeable as well. So look at that. I can even have lighting, lighting for my video. Well, good morning. It was a great night last night. Super quiet, really quiet. I hear the loons basically all night and a few owls. I tried to capture those for you. So I think what I heard last night was um, definitely barred owls. So that is really beautiful. Um, lots of loons, tree frogs, uh, no wolves and no coyotes, which is kind of a bit of a disappointment. I was really hoping uh, for hearing more of the mammals. It's really clear and still. I hear someone's dog across the lake barking. Well, the plan for today is just to relax. I'm just out in the boat, enjoying the nice glassy water before the winds pick up again. I had a huge bite of a bass just out in the middle where they were feeding kind of a suspended uh, area of bait fish, but uh, I got off the line, which is a real pain in the butt. That would have been an exciting, uh, that would have been an exciting thing uh, to catch. It seemed like it had a little bit of weight to it. But uh, anyways, we had a good time here. Um, I just realized how fortunate we are to have the cabin uh, and the surrounding land to enjoy because this really is sort of what uh, I have there at the cabin. So um, this is awesome. So if you guys want to explore uh, the back country, um, I highly recommend Algonquin Park. It's wonderful. There are a few more people in this part of the back country than I would have hoped for. But again, it is a kind of a busy weekend, so I'm not too surprised. But uh, I hope to see you guys in the next adventure. Got a couple more adventures coming up uh, in September. So we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.